calendar. Um, next week, uh, test on Friday, end of finals week. We're not going to learn anything new next week. Hopefully, I'll be able to finish most of uh, 12 6 today. If anything, we'll mop up on Monday, and then you can have the, west, the rest of the week to prepare. Uh, there are going to be five problems on the test. There's going to be one parabola question. One, what was the next one? One ellipse question. One hyperbola. Okay. One augmented matrix. That's the row operations. That's what we just got done doing. Okay. And then we're going to have one partial fraction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. Wait, how, how many places are we? Hundred. Wait, is that? Are we gonna have area? No. No. Nope. Nope. Got it. That's what you need to study for that test. Now, some of you did poorly on the first test. You better get a good grade. So you have an entire week to get this figured out. We've been spending, we spent like almost two weeks on conic sections. Good. Well, it'll just be this type of stuff. Okay. All right. So I'll, I'll have a new review posted up there on Monday, but that's what you're going to need to study for the test next Friday. Okay. No parabolas, no ellipses, no hyperbolas. Know what you're doing when you have a system of equations, so you can write down an augmented matrix and either show the work by hand or do it on the calculator. And we're going to finish up partial fractions. Yes. Can you throw in one circle? What? Can you throw in one no. Circle? No. Circles are so easy. Maybe a bonus question. We'll see. Okay. Everybody good there? So please, whatever you have to do between now and next Friday, from what I understand, most of the finals are going to be over on Wednesday. So you'll have at least... Thursday to dedicate to that and then finish up on Friday. Uh, depends. I said most, not all. Thank you very much. I'm done on Thursday. I'm fine. All right. So, question? There is. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll, I'll give it to you. Okay. Ready? Okay, watch. Okay, these were the basic steps that we go through. This is, a, this is a pretty long list, but it's not like you have to have it memorized. Once you get used to this, um, we just do the same thing every single time. So the first thing we want to do is we want to factor the denominator completely. So let's take a look at this one right here. Let's factor that completely. That's a pretty easy one to factor. This is going to be x over x minus 4 x plus 3. Yeah? So on the one before that, the 3 and the 2 that you plugged in, did you plug it in because that was what was on the denominator at the top? Those were the zeros of the denominator. So that's, that's why we... Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's yeah. Perfect. That's why That's why I call them convenient zeros. Mrs. Cavan calls them sweet numbers because they do sweet things. I call them convenient because they're a very convenient choice. Okay? Everybody good there? Okay. This came from two different fractions. Okay, we're going to take a look at whatever the factors are in the denominator. X minus 4 couldn't be in the common denominator if it wasn't in the denominator of one of the fractions. So we're going to make one of the fractions have a denominator of X minus 4. And X plus 3 couldn't be in the denominator of, of the end result if there wasn't a factor of X plus 3 in one of the fact, uh, fractions. Okay, then we have to figure out what numbers or number went on the top. So we always look at the factor in the denominator. We think, what degree is this? It's degree 1. We reduce that by 1. That would be degree 0, which means it doesn't have an x. It's just a plain old number. So the top, we're going to make that an a. We call that an undetermined coefficient. And what do we put above here? We put a b. Any questions there? Okay, the next thing we do is we have to basically solve this equation. This equation has fractions in it. We're not really thrilled about working with fractions. So what we do is we multiply both sides of the equation by something that will cancel off all of these denominators. What will cancel off all those denominators? X minus 4 and X plus 3. 
Now something cool happens here when we multiply with this first one. The only thing that's left of that, because the denominators both cancel, is just x. When I multiply here, the x minus 4 cancels, so the a is still left, and we've got an x plus 3. And when I multiply over here, the b is still left, but the x plus 3 canceled, which means there's an x minus 4 left. Okay, now, we're going to just focus on this right here. We realize this is called partial fraction decomposition. We're breaking this fraction into two parts. We want to figure out what those numbers are, but we're going to do that by solving this equation. And we notice that there are three variables. There's an x, there's an a, and there's a b. But if we make a really convenient choice of x, we can make these answers just fall right out. So a convenient choice for x would be whatever the zeros are. So I'm going to choose x to be 4, and I'm going to choose x to be negative 3. Everybody good there? I mean, you can identify what numbers we're going to plug in before we even write down this other stuff. You can just look at the denominators, figure out what the zeros are. Okay, are there any questions? Okay, so let's plug in x equals 4. If that's the case, then we get a 4. We get an a times 4 plus 3. We get a b times 4 minus 4. Now, I'm going to write these down on this one, but then I'm going to do the simple arithmetic from now on. So, what is this right here? That's a 0. 0 times 4. Who cares what the number b is? It's being multiplied by 0, so it's gone. See why that's a convenient choice? When we plug in the 4, that makes this factor 0. So that means the only thing left is 4 on this side and 7a over here. So what does that mean A is? 4 over 7. 4 over seven. A is 4 over 7. Okay, I'm going to switch colors. We're going to plug in x equals negative 3. So that's going to make this side, again, I'm looking up here. I'm going to plug in a negative 3. What's that going to make this? Yeah. That's going to make that 0 plus b times negative 3 minus 4. So this gives us negative 3 equals negative 7b. So what's b? 3 sevenths. Okay, the hard stuff is done. We know what a and b are. The idea was we wanted to break this fraction into these two parts right here, but we need to know what numbers go on the top. So on the top with the a, that's going to be a 4 sevenths over x minus 4 plus b is 3 sevenths, so I can write 3 sevenths over x plus 3. Now, if you want to leave your answer like that, I'm okay with that. If you look in the back of the book, it probably says this. It'll say 4 over 7x minus 4 plus 3 over 7x plus 3. They basically just put the 3 sevenths out front, left the 3 on the top, the 7 would be on the bottom. Okay, I, I kind of like that better. This one is prettier, you're right, okay? Really not into looks. Okay, any questions? Yeah? Because when I plug in, when I plug in a 3, or a negative 3, this is negative 3 minus, or negative 3 plus 3, that would be 0, 0 times a is 0. Okay, you, you don't have to write it if you don't want to. If you recognize that that goes away when you plug in a negative 3, then don't don't write it. I just wrote it so it was clear that it turned into a zero. It just didn't disappear. Okay. Anything else? Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Okay, we want to factor the denominator. That's the first thing we want to do. So I'm going to do this in stages. I'm going to write this as x, x squared minus 2x plus 1. Good there? The numerator is x plus 2. I'm going to keep factoring this. This is x plus 2. I need two numbers that multiply to be negative 2 that can, or sorry, multiply to be positive 1 combined to be negative 2. Okay. Negative 1 and negative 1. So it really would be this x plus 2, x, x minus 1 quantity squared. Okay, now, before I go any further with this, 
are there whoops are there any questions on those first two problems that we just got done doing okay because those those are relatively easy aren't they okay I want to go back to the starter question that we looked at yesterday okay remember these two that we combined we got a common denominator and the common denominator for these three fractions was x minus 1 quantity squared times x plus 3. And the common denominator for these two fractions was x minus 1 quantity squared times x plus 3. They were the same common denominator, but this one had three different fractions and this one had two different fractions. Okay? So this next one is not that much more difficult, but I do want you to understand why it works the way that it does. When we write this in its parts, okay, does everybody agree there would have to be a part with an x on the bottom? Okay. And does everybody agree? Write it like this, please. There'd have to be a part with an x minus 1 quantity squared on the bottom. Is that all right? Could there have been one that was just an x minus 1? Yeah, there could have. Because the common denominator, so if I covered these up, let me do it in this color. If I covered that up, the common denominator here is x times x minus 1 quantity squared. What's the common denominator if I bring that back? x times x minus 1 quantity squared. So what we're doing here is, this is what we call a repeated <coughs> linear factor. Okay, There's an x, plain old x. There's an x minus 1 quantity squared, so that x minus 1 repeats. There had to be one with x minus 1 quantity squared, but there could have been one like this. So what we're doing here is we're saving a place for this and saying, you know what? Maybe that was there, maybe it wasn't, but if it is, I'm going to figure out what it was. Because remember, the idea is to break this down into its parts. Partial fraction decomposition. Break it into its parts. There could have been three parts, like that example that I gave you in the starter question, or there could have been just two parts. We're going to find it either way. But we have to account for the possibility that there was one that looked like this, with just a plain old x minus 1. Any questions? Sure? Okay, then we're back to the normal rules then. Let's figure out, this is degree 1. That means the numerator is degree 0. What do I put up here? An A. This factor is degree 1. Top's degree 0, so I put a B. Take a good look at this. Remember, the rule is this. The numerator is always one degree less than the factor in the denominator. Don't mix up the factor with the fact that it's been squared or cubed or whatever. What is the degree of that right there? It's degree one, just like this one was. So above this, we're going to make this degree zero. So what am I going to put there? I'm going to put a C. So on this one, I have three different parts to find. Now, the nice thing about these problems right here, like we just got done doing, is we're looking for two undetermined coefficients. Look how many convenient zeros I have. Each one of those is going to produce an answer. I got an A when I plug this one in. I got a B when I plug that one in. Okay. How many convenient zeros do I have here? Okay. I have zero from this one. What's from this one? What makes that one zero? One. Do I have any others? Nope. Okay, so I'm going to be able to find out what two of them are pretty easily. The third one's going to take a little bit of work. Okay, so these get progressively more difficult. So let's take a look at this one. When I plug in a zero, whoops, I forgot to multiply here, didn't I? We're going to multiply by x and x minus 1 quantity squared. On this side, I end up with x plus 2. Careful here, this is a times x minus 1 quantity squared. This is b times what's left when I cancel off an x minus 1? An x and an x minus 1. And what's left here? A c and an x. Right? Got ahead of myself. Sorry. Good there? Okay. The first convenient 0 I'm going to plug in is 0. The next one I'm going to plug in is 1. Let's see where we get there. So when I plug in a 0, I get... Now, again, is it okay if I skip a, a little bit of the writing and then just do the arithmetic mentally? What do I get on this side when I plug in a 0? I get a 2. 
let's take a look at this. If I plug in a zero, this is zero minus one, that's negative one. Square that, what do I get? I get a one. So this is just one times a or just a. What do I get when I plug a zero into this? Yeah, the whole thing goes away because it would be b times zero times <laughs> negative one. So that's going to be zero. That's gone. What do I get when I plug a zero into this? Zero. So, Kang, if it's okay, I'm going to write a zero for that one, and I'm going to write a zero for this one, just to acknowledge that this turns into a zero and that turns into a zero. Okay? So what's a? A is two. It's that simple. Got one of the answers. Wait, why didn't a turn? Because it didn't have a factor of x in it. Okay, had a factor of x minus one. Good. Yeah. This one right here. Okay. So that's what we were talking about earlier. If this common denominator has an x and an x minus 1 quantity squared, one of them would have to have an x. One of them would have to have an x minus 1 quantity squared, but it may have had one like this. Okay, So remember back to this example at the very beginning. This has three fractions, and the same common denominator is this one that only had two fractions. Okay, So the problem here is, we have the answer. We're trying to go back to the original problem. We don't know whether the original problem had two or three in it. And so on this one, we just account for the fact that, you know what? I know this one had to be there. I know this one had to be there. This one might be there. If it turns out it's not there, B would be what number? We'll find out that B is zero. Does that make sense? No, no. If you, want to, if you want to come see me and we can take a really close look at it and convince you. But this is the way it has to be done. Okay. It accounts for all the possibilities. Okay. Okay, the next number we're going to plug in is a 1. What do I get when I plug in a 1 over here? I get a 3. What happens to this one? Turns into a 0. What happens to this one? Turns into a 0. What do I get here? I get C. C times 1. So what's C? C is 3. Okay, now, those are relatively simple answers to get. The three problems that we've done on this page, all the work we've done on this page, it's all fairly straightforward. Yes, it's a lot of stuff to learn. No, it's not the easiest thing on the planet, but it's relatively simple. Okay? Now we have to figure out how we find the B. Here's how we find the B. We come back here and we take a look at this equation right here. There are lots of different ways to solve these. I think this is the most straightforward approach because it finds the easy ones in a very simple fashion like we've done here. That isn't that hard to do, is it? Okay. Now we're going to take these and we plug them back in right here and here. So I'm going to rewrite this as, this is x plus 2. a is 2, so this is 2 times x minus 1 quantity squared. This is plus bx x minus 1, because remember, we don't know what b is, and what was c again? Three. So this is 3x. Everybody see that? I've written this one with what I know a is and what I know c is. The only thing missing now is b. I've got to figure out what, c, what b is. Everybody good there? Okay, here's how you do it. Let's multiply these together. That's x squared minus 2x plus 1. With a, with a 2 out front. So we're going to distribute that through. So this is going to be 2x squared minus 4x plus 2. Now let's distribute through here. This is bx squared minus bx plus 3x. This is not hard, it just uses a different part of your brain that you don't no normally use. Okay, now let's collect the like terms. I have 2x squared and I have bx squared. 
I have minus 4x and minus bx. And I have plus 2, whoops, and 3x. And I have plus 2. I just, whoops, that's a squared. Okay. See how I've got those all lined up? I've got the x squared here, I've got the x's there, and I've got the 2 on the end. Again, not difficult, just you don't normally do this. Take a good look at this. I'm going to write down the x squared term. So I'm going to write a set of parentheses, and I'm going to write everything that has an x squared on it. A 2 does, and a positive b does, times x squared. I basically just factored that. I factored it out and put it on the end. I know I normally put it out front, but I normally write the x's on the end, and I write the coefficient out in front, so that's what I did here. Plus, let's look at the x's. I've got a negative 4, I've got a minus b, and I've got a plus 3. With an x on the end. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that in just a second. And then a plus 2. Is everybody okay with that? We don't normally do this, but it's not hard. Yeah. The x minus 2x plus 1. Where I, I, I don't, where, where are you? This right here? Oh, this? I, I squared this. x minus 1 quantity squared is x squared minus 2x plus 1. It's a perfect trinomial square. I foiled this if you want to think of it that way. Good? Yeah. Did you move the uh, x plus 2 over to the right side? No. No? No, so it's still there. Uh, multiply each one of those no, in no, there. No, no, no. On like this fourth one down, or like x two. This guy right, right here. Yeah. Where is that plus two? That plus two. See this right here? Two times x squared is two x squared. Two times minus two x is minus four x, and two times one is two. Oh, okay. Just distributed through. Okay. So all I'm doing is just simplifying this side right here. This side's still x plus two. Good there. Okay, here's what I'm saying. This polynomial is equal to that polynomial. This one right here is equal to that one right there. So take a good look at this. This one has an x squared term on it. Does this one? Nope. So it must have 0x squared. This one is a 1x. That stuff right there is this ugly mess times x. This is a 2 and that's a 2. So what we do now is, and again, this is just logic. So think about this for a second. If this side, which is a three-term polynomial, equals this side, which we've written as a three-term polynomial, just written 0x squared, if these two are going to be equal, then that had better equal the number in front there. This, which is a 1, had better equal that number right there. And this had better equal that number right there. Now, clearly the easiest of the three, the yellow, the green, or the blue, is which one? The blue. Two equals two. Gosh, we got that part, right? That should make us feel kind of good. Now let's take a look at this part right here. Zero equals two plus b. Well, if zero equals two plus b, then what's b? b is negative two. And there's your last answer. So you have to go through that mess to figure out what B is. You're going to need extra paper. Okay? Any questions? Okay, so let's stop and have a parenthetical conversation. I realize this looks overwhelming right now. If you don't practice this, you will see this in 1050. You will not get it there either, and you will get your clock cleaned when you take the test on partial fractions. Okay? If you don't like this, you should not go further in math. If you don't like this, and you're going to go into engineering, pick another career. Okay? Because a lot of times, that's what mathematicians do. They figure out very funky ways of solving problems, stuff that you would never think of in a million years on your own. Okay? 
And if you don't like taking stuff that other people like Oliver Heaviside figured out how to do and then build on that and figure out, oh, that's cool. They figured out a bunch of this problem. I can figure out the next, next step in it. Because that's really, if you think about it, that's what a lot of geniuses do. They take what Henry Ford did and they build on that. They take what um, Albert Einstein did, they build on that. What Thomas Edison did, they took all those ideas and then they build on top of them. You don't have to figure out what how to solve this. You just have to learn the method they figured out and then build on that. Okay? If you don't like building on stuff like that or don't like learning stuff like that, that's why a lot of people quit when they get through 1050. Okay? So just keep that in mind. Part of this class is to help you prepare you for 1050 and the other part is to let you know realistically what you're looking at. Okay? I know all of you. I've corrected your tests. I've helped you with math. I know whether or not you're capable of this, and every one of you is capable of figuring this out. Now, some of you it's going to be pretty easy. Some of you it's going to be more difficult, but you can all do this. Okay? All right. So if you didn't like that and think, my gosh, all that to figure out what one stupid letter B was, take a look at this. This should be moderately interesting. Uh, let's see. So we come back here and what? Uh, let's see. Let's take a look. Oh, good point. So this would say 1 equals negative 4 minus b plus 3. So this would be 1 equals, this would be negative 1. Neg hold on. Negative 1 minus b. So if you move this to the other side, you do that by adding 1. So that's 2. So what does b equal? So it does work. What negative 3? Uh, yeah, that's a B. Okay? So, right here? That 3 right here. You can go back and watch the video. So, this is the interesting part. Okay, watch. This is a very, see this yellow one? That's a very easy equation to solve, isn't it? Okay, if I set the two green ones, because that's going to be 1, and it's got to equal this right here. If I solve this, that's a more complicated one to solve, but look what it says B is. It says B is negative 2. So do you think we got it right? Sure, we got it right. Okay, so the end answer to this is, remember, we wanted to write this fraction here in these three parts. It does have three parts. So we're going to write the answer as, what was A? 2. So this is going to be 2 over x. What was b? Negative 2 over x minus 1. And what was c? c was 3 over x minus 1 quantity squared. That right there is the fraction broken down into its parts. Okay? Any questions? Okay. Hold on. We're not done. There's more. There's plenty more. Okay. Between now and Monday, at the very least, I want you to try this problem right here. This is just as easy as the other ones. In fact, compared to the last one, it is much easier. Okay? So try and get that one solved, and then we'll finish this up on Monday.